grateful for your time, your attention. I want to talk to you today about how to sell your custom furniture. So those of you that are just finding the channel, maybe just finding the podcast, it's, uh, or maybe just at the very beginning stages of your journey, hopefully this really helps you. For those of you that are maybe even further along, you're more, a more experienced uh, handmade business owner or woodworker, um, hopefully some of this advice can still help you as well if you're struggling to get sales. And so I want to talk to you about kind of the thought process behind generating sales for your custom furniture business. And now, most people I see do this wrong. So I'm gonna start there. Most people do this wrong, and I'm gonna tell you why, what they do and why. So most people start their business by building something and hoping it sells, right? That's exactly how I started my business. My wife wanted me to make this thing for our uh, newborn son. I made that, there, were in, there was interest around it. Then I thought, you know what? I can uh, make coffee tables and I can just list them on Marketplace and sell them, right? And I got a few sales, but you're never able to ask premium prices for those products. You're not uh, selling them in, in an environment that people that would be willing to pay premium prices are in. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how do I create an environment or find an environment to sell in that, that people are willing to pay premium prices? The number one thing that I can tell uh, most woodworkers, custom furniture business owners that they need to stop doing is they need to stop building something and then hoping to sell it. Quit doing that. And let me tell you why. Number one, when you build something and then hope to sell it, the person that's ordering it from you, they're not getting it custom. It's not, it's not, it doesn't feel like it was made for them. The second part of this is that most of the time, um, unless you have standardized this product, you have incredible marketing, incredible advertising, um, like next level video content, and you're trying to sell it mass market, or and it's super unique or different, people that are gonna buy woodworking products or handmade stuff, they're gonna want it, they're, wanna ha they're gonna wanna have some say in how it's made, the dimensions, the color, the materials, something along those lines. And if you don't give them that option, um, what's gonna happen is that they are going to be uh, ready to try to you know knock you down on price and so this is why a lot of people they say most people that are in the woodworking space they say well i just can't compete with ikea and i can't compete with all these other you're not trying to compete with them you're not trying to compete with them your buyer for your products is not an ikea buyer okay and so there's there's such a giant discrepancy between what's possible and what we think and usually that chasm is that we're just going about it the wrong way. We're, 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 we're trying to build something and then sell it, okay? So how we do this is, then this is how I got out of this group. So I started that way, my business back in 2017, and that's how I started my custom furniture and woodworking business, was I was, I was um, building something and picking a color and hoping that it would sell, right? And so what I learned to do Y'all take some advice from me on this. What I learned to do is that if I had not built something yet, I would take a picture from another um, builder or another furniture maker, not in your local area, but someone across the country that you, you find on Instagram, you think I could build that product and I'd love to build that product. Then you post it on your business page and tag them in it. Hey, we love this table that so-and-so built in Oregon or wherever they are, right? And then you say, we would love to build one of these for our customers. We can make it custom. You can choose your colors. Let me know if you'd like to start a conversation on this, right? And what that allows you to do is it allows you to have hundreds of designs to choose from that you can now build without ever having to sink money and time and energy into building any of those. But now they're offerings that you offer the people that are seeing your page, seeing your business, seeing you as a custom furniture business owner, okay? Now, the key here is that you have to tag them. If you do not tag them in the photo that you're using, you're stealing. You're stealing intellectual property, okay? You cannot do that. But if we highlight and we say, we absolutely love this design, they've knocked it out of the park, we would love to, uh, build a rendition of this. Is there anybody that would be interested in that? Um, that's going to allow you to um, have lots of designs to choose from out of the gate. All right, my next piece of advice when it comes to how to sell custom furniture is you want to pick 
colors that everybody wants, right? If you're using yellow, neon, baby blue, orange, right? Those are not, those pieces of furniture are not things that the masses are putting in their homes, okay? Or their businesses. Now, can you sell that stuff? Yes, you can. But I used to work at a, uh, at a car dealership and for every yellow car that we would order, we would order, order 10 blacks, 10 whites, 10 silvers, and 10 grays, right? And so for you, you wanna to stick to white, black, gray, brown furniture, okay? Paints, stains. Most people want neutral colors inside their home for their furniture. So start there, okay? We're not trying to be different and wild and out of the box right here. We're trying to get orders, right? What's your goal? Is your goal to be just, I just wanna express myself through, through, my, through my woodwork? If that's your goal, that's totally fine. But if, if expressing yourself means that you're using cra crazy colors that one out of 500 people would be even relatively interested in, then you can expect not, not to get a whole lot of sales. And so you gotta make sure that you're not using any crazy colors, you're, you're picking neutrals that people, most people would want, they would be interested in. 95% of our furniture is made with white paint, black paint, gray, brown, and variations of brown uh, stain options, okay? And so the next thing I would just say is if you're trying to sell custom furniture, if you're trying to sell custom furniture, you're trying to build your business, don't build what you wanna build build what people want, okay? Don't build what you want to build. I see this all the time. Well, Zach, I just, I'm an artist by, by nature and I just don't want to feel, feel like I'm cooped into a box. Well, you have to determine what you value. What do you value most? Do you value creative expression more than providing for your family and making money? If that's, if that is what you value, then that's totally cool and you should do that. But if you're listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube channel because you're like, man, I'm trying to make money selling furniture. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to figure out how to sell furniture. Then quit worrying about, am I expressing myself artistically? Worry about, is what I'm making selling? And if it's not, why is it not, okay? And so we build, we don't build what we love, we build what sells. And so I got two more points for you. And this one's probably the most important point that I could make in this video. If you wanna sell custom furniture, you have to build a brand. Again, a brand is not a logo. A brand is a feeling, is an aesthetic, is a look, is a feel. It's how you communicate to your potential customers. And so many people, they cannot sell custom furniture for high-end prices because they've never built a brand. If you go on Facebook Marketplace, and you just see a random farmhouse table that you know that some dude just started, he built it in his garage, and it's just Joe Smo, his farmhouse table, it's $500. It probably, number one, isn't fantastic because it, you can, he's probably not using the, the best materials, doesn't have the best practices fi figured out. Um, but two, it's just like, it's just, I'm just buying it from some random dude, right? But if, there, if you create a company that develops a really strong reputation in your local area, and you sell high-end stuff that's expensive and nice and it's like a thing to have one of your products then people pay a lot of money for, for to have your product so i'm just going to kind of walk you through one of my strategies that i've used in the last you know two or three years and so from the get-go we wanted to build a strong brand back in 2017 2018 but a couple years ago we got the opportunity to put a, uh, one of our tables actually three tables into a parade of homes home we had a builder come to us. They were actually building a home for themselves and they needed three tables. They're like, hey, can you give me a discount? Because um, I'm one of the premier build builders in the city. Um, lots of people are gonna come by and see this stuff. And I was like, sure. So I gave them a little bit of a discount, probably more than I needed to. I didn't make a ton of money on those three tables. And then along with that, I got an ad in the Parade of Homes magazine that went out to every single person that came to the Parade of Homes. And so for those of you that don't know what the Parade of Homes is, twice a year, and you most likely have one somewhere around your area, they're, they're, they're all over the country, uh, twice a year in the spring and in the fall, builders, contractors, uh, they build spec homes or, or, or custom homes, and what, what they'll do is they'll have a day or a weekend, or a couple weekends actually, to where they open up these homes 
for you to go from one house to the next and look at finishes and layouts and designs and talk to the builders and all sorts of stuff, right? So they're looking at cabinet work, they're looking at granite, they're looking at uh, tile, they're looking at who provided the windows, who provided the furniture, all those things, right? So I got in with this, this builder for this one house, built three tables that went inside of his home for Parade of Homes. I took out a $1,500 ad in the Parade of Homes magazine and made just the most beautiful ad that I could possibly make. And so it was a two page ad. One side of it was just a giant picture of our furniture, right? And on the other page was an about us story, about our story, how we started. It was a picture of my family. It was a quote that said, if you're more fortunate than others, don't build a taller fence, build a longer table, right? Which is perfect for a custom table company, right? And so in all this, I didn't write any orders at the Parade of Homes. But since then, guys, since then, that was two years ago, two years ago, since then, we have probably made fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in sales off of getting started in the Parade of Homes. And we created a, a brand that carries weight. People that come to Parade of Homes, they're people that are planning on building building houses. They've got money, they've got disposable income. They're, they're planning on, on doing stuff. So literally this coming week, my furniture company, Iron by Iron Designs, there was a lady that has a home in the Parade of Homes this upcoming fall. She ordered over $13,000 worth of furniture from us. We're gonna have a coffee table, a dining table, a buffet, a entryway table, all kinds of stuff that's going in her home. So why do I say this? Because building a brand is what is gonna allow you to position yourself differently than your competition. And if you don't know how to build a brand, then hit me up. Hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Facebook, find me on YouTube, comment below, let me know. Like, hey, Zach, I don't have any idea where to build a brand or how to build a brand. And, and that's, this might be a podcast episode that we do in the future. But building a brand is gonna allow you to separate yourself from your competition. It's gonna allow you to charge premium prices. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. You can buy Walmart shoes or you can buy Nike shoes or you can buy Gucci shoes, right? What's the difference between all those? They all have about the same amount of material in them. The labor to make them is probably relatively similar, but one has created a really strong brand. He's charging a hundred times more than the Walmart shoes, 500 times more than the Walmart shoes. And so it's that branding that allows you to position yourself differently. That's the point I'm trying to make by saying you've got to create a strong brand. Okay, the last thing that I would just say, this is super practical on how to sell your custom furniture is you sell it online. You know, I've seen a lot of people that they just put all their time and energy into going to trade shows. They put all their time and energy going to flea markets. They put all their time and energy into things like that. You've got to go online. The online marketplace is where all your traffic is. It's where people are. They are not on, they're not looking at billboards driving down the road anymore. They're not going, I mean, there's still people going to flea markets and going to trade shows and things like that, but the number of people that are going to those things has decreased rapidly. You've gotta think along with this, you gotta think, am I in a place that I'm gonna get a premium customer? So where are you not going to get premium customers? On Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace. Most people that are on Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace, they're looking for a deal, right? If you go to flea markets, you're, you're gonna have buyers walking by your booth that are looking for a deal. The whole idea here is, is how do I put myself and put my products in environments where premium buyers are? That's the goal. Now, if you're just starting out, you don't have any traction, you gotta start on Craigslist, and you gotta start on Marketplace, and that's how you start to build a brand. You need to post from your business page, from your personal page. Facebook groups, your local Facebook group, your local um, entrepreneur group, right you can you just i would hammer it everywhere that you can but as you do this you need to get a website you need to get legitimate you need to start building a brand you need to focus on instead of just hey buy my stuff buy my stuff buy my stuff you start trying to create a feeling around your company around your around your brand and again the quote that i used earlier this was this was huge for us when you're more fortunate than others don't build a taller fence build a longer table that quote it kind of encompasses our brand. We want to be a family, a brand that's all about family, inviting people to the table, being warm, being wel welcoming, not just a pushy brand that's trying to just push furniture off on people. And so by doing that, we attract the right kind of buyer, the right kind of people. This month, by the way, today is the last day of September. It's September 30th. 
we today, we will break $100,000 in sales for Iron by Iron. So I say all this coming from a place of experience. Now that's, this is one of our best months ever, but on average, we do 50, 60, $65,000 a month in sales. And so we do this consistently by having created a strong brand and continually running strong advertising campaigns, having lots of products to choose from, offering customization. This is how we sell custom furniture at premium prices. So with that being said, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for your time, your attention. If you're watching this, if this has provided any value to you, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be putting out content over and over and over, we're putting out three videos a week right now. Lots of uh, short content. Go find me on Instagram. It's just Zach Vaught underscore. You can look up Handmade Business Secrets on Instagram as well. We got content on there. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to go check out the podcast. I've got over 90 episodes uh, on the podcast that we don't have on YouTube. So you want, you're gonna to wanna to go check that out. It's gonna be extremely valuable to you. So with that being said, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.